Hey, I'm back on the internet. So actually I filmed a floss tube yesterday. I like filmed the entire thing and then I edited it and rendered the whole thing off. And then I was like, oh, I'll just upload that later. I've got to go do a thing. Um, and then my computer, which had just got fixed, decided it was going to crash again. And we had to like reinstall and the whole thing got wiped again. So um, yeah, I lost a bunch of my kind of sentimental photos, which is annoying. Um, but at least this is something that I can re-record. So I'm just going to do that now while, while the iron is hot. Um, yeah. <laughs> so given that I finally, finally probably have a working PC, I think I can, um, I can get this done, but I'm not really going to have any before pictures. So it's been a while since I was in the, the land of the internet. Um, I haven't done that much stitching due to the sewing and the dyeing and the knitting and the other things, which I'll talk about later, but, um, I'll talk about the cross stitch first because this is a floss tube. Um, yeah. Uh, so I guess first one, oh, there is quite a lot actually. I guess it's been longer than I thought, but yeah, yeah, I, you know, it's been however long it's been, time is a concept. Uh, cross stitch. <laughs> so the first one that I have worked on is Mirabilia's The Dreamer. And this is her. So she has actually looks like an actual like flesh person now. And I could have said that less creepily, but I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's that's her arm, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> and I love how the colours are coming out on this fabric. This is Evergreen by Crafty Kitten. It's a 32 count. And I was worried the green wasn't going to show up, but it does show up. So I think that's going to go well. I, yeah, I haven't figured out what, what you're supposed to do while there's a long period of silence when you're holding up a thing um, so that people can see it. I don't know, like, I, I guess you're supposed to make some entertaining word noises. Um, but as you can tell by the words I just said, I'm not great at that, so <laughs> but here's, here's a pretty thing. Anyway. So that's that one. This is gonna be a, a little bit of a speed run because I do not have as much time as I did yesterday. But we yeah, we can do it, we can do it. Speed run cross stitch, 100 <laughs> percent Joking, I never get anything to 100 percent yeah, I only have two gig of RAM on my PC now, so no, no video games for me. Video James is exiled from this household. Oh. Okay, so the next one is my Death by Cross Stitch, and I don't have a before picture for this one. But I think last time I, I had, I was up to about here, and so all of this is new in the last month or few weeks or however time has passed. Still really enjoying this one. Um, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look like a lot, but considering this is on a 40 count and it's one strand of silk over two, that's quite a lot of stitching actually. <laughs> But this is so much fun. It actually, I think it teaches me patience to, to be working with one color on such a big design. I do favor the bigger things, as you can probably tell. <laughs> That's because I am very much a process maker. And I actually realized having finished a few things recently that I tend to slow down when I get towards the end of a project because I'm actually kind of scared of finishing it because then I'll have to look at my work from a, a critical point of view as a finished object, I guess. Um, but it's, I, I, 
I've been able to overcome that a bit more recently, I think. Um, just just by reminding myself, like, okay, well, is it finished? Is it good enough? It doesn't have to be perfect. Does it work for the purpose that I made it for? Like, is it wearable? Is it displayable? Does it look good? Yeah. <laughs> then, awesome. Objective achieved. Um, did I learn something while doing it? So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, does anyone else get that? Anyway, death by cross stitch, long dog samplers. It was a lot of fun. I know that one is going around the interwebs a lot because a lot of people started that one and, <laughs> like me, are perhaps taking a while about it. Okay, this is my Gecko Rouge Mermaid. I just every time I look at her, I'm just like, ah, so cool. This is another massive one. Um, I think I'm about two percent into this, maybe. I'm not gonna take it out of the hoop because I'm currently working on this one. But there it is. Not that much more progress than last time. Um, but there's so many colours in here, and it just looks ah, oh, just looks amazing. And I've really kind of got into the full coverage stride now and it is very enjoyable. But as you can see, a long way to go. So maybe I'll have this finished in plus tube 275. We'll see. <laughs> Has that been? Is that four? That's four. Anyway, the last cross stitch related thing, well, project that I have is a very special one, a new start. And as you might be able to tell from the size of the fabric, it is a chatelaine design. Um, and if you have not heard of this designer, um, definitely go check it out. The, these are kind of like the Rolls Royce of cross stitch. <laughs> they're, not, they're very fancy, um, very, very big, very intricate, lots of different stitches, lots of um, interesting, mat unusual materials that are used. Um, they're very, very intricate designs and I've been wanting to do one for years. I've been slowly collecting the materials for this one. This is the Alhambra Garden Mandala. Is it Mandala or Mandala? I don't know. Um, but I finally have started it. And here it is. I've got it the right way up this time. I <laughs> think yesterday I had it upside down. It doesn't matter because it's going to be symmetrical all the way around, but this is my small start on the Alhambra Garden mandala. And I love it. This is the treasure braid in here, sparkly, and then these beautiful gardens around. All in here is going to be beads, blue beads, because it is like a, a pool. So, okay, I'm going to nerd out a bit here. Um, <laughs> because I, I studied archaeology at university and one of the modules that we, that we did, that we learned, was about medieval Islamic architecture in Spain, um, which, is, which is what the Alhambra Palace is, among many, many other buildings. Um, and the way that these, these palaces were constructed, they were all built around a central courtyard and there was always a, a pond or a pool in the middle. And this was, so this was like the, the kind of private outdoor space where, where the family would be and stuff. Um, and a lot of them, like in the Alhambra, um, there's, uh, there's like three rectangular pools side by side. And just like the reflection is, is beautiful. And um, I, can't, I can't remember exactly what this, there's, there's some kind of representation um, about it. Um, 
but yeah that's it's just really beautiful and um yeah so I've always wanted to go there and plus my my grandfather went there uh visited the Alhambra as a child um and showed me the pictures and I was just like oh my goodness I have to go there one day so one day I will but not soon <laughs> but in the meantime I can I can work on this beautiful design I cannot wait to get to these beads in the center it's just it's just gonna absolutely make the design but because I'm stitching this in a hoop at the moment I can't really do beads I kind of have to wait till my big scroll frame is free but that's got death by cross stitch on it so that's not gonna be free anytime soon so it might be that I have to wait until the end to do all the beads in this which is absolutely gonna drive me mad but we'll see <laughs> and yeah that's the size of the fabric it's gonna be a while <laughs> Oh, by the way, this is a 32 count cream linen. I am I was a bit kind of wary of um, a background that would distract from the design or anything. I've seen some really, really beautiful chatelaines done on like hand dyed or multicolored fabrics. But um, I think like many people for my first time, I was a bit cautious. <laughs> so I think this will be really nice. Oh, and I did forget one. I have one more. This is Al Forest Embroideries, The Enchanted Forest. Um, I yeah, I love this this designer. Um, they are based in Russia and they do designs um inspired by like Russian folk culture and folk tales and things and they're so cool. And I want to live in this enchanted forest in a little witch's hut. So not a huge amount done on this, but I did finish this tree with the woodpecker. I love it so much. We have, uh, we put some bird boxes up recently around our house and we have some blue tits nesting in one of the trees up the front, which means I can watch them from my window, um, like carrying their little nesting materials in and hopefully there will be baby birds soon. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I know, full of the joys of spring, sickening, isn't it? Nah, not this year. I'm, I'm enjoying all the things that I can this year. <laughs> so that's, I've now reached the top of the design, which makes me feel like I'm getting somewhere and that's a good feeling. <laughs> this one is so much fun because every time you finish a motif, it's like a little mini finish. So. It's really motivating to work on and the threads are beautiful because they use their own hand dyed threads or over dyed um, and they are just gorgeous. So yeah that's an endorsement from me. <laughs> Not that I'm, this isn't Sponcon but I just like them. <sighs> Put you there. Okay so that's all of the cross stitch. Um, the thing that has been distracting me or taking up my time most from cross stitch um in the past few however's is a sewing project oh wait hold on before that i have a little bit of stash just 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 a little, just just a wafer thin so I just got a couple of mirabilia charts, um, some of the older ones because I was I didn't want them to go out of print and then not be able to find them. So I got fairy flora, which is not my usual aesthetic. Like I'm not normally a, a pink fairy kind of person, but there's something about this. It I don't know something that draws me to it. I really like the color scheme, the composition with the flowers at the bottom here, her wings. This wand is made entirely out of beads. I've seen this stitched a few times and, and it's really beautiful. It's just, I don't know, there's just something about it. It's just, I, I just think it's neat. <laughs> I just like it. So I got that one and it's the oldest uh, mirabilia that's still in print, I think. Uh, and then I also got the Nouveau Sampler, which has been one of my 
favourite memorabilia designs since I first discovered them. I'm not normally, I'm not that into samplers, although there's, there are several that I do like, like long door samplers, etc. Um, and this one, which is a bit more pictorial. I really like, I even like doing alphabets. I know a lot of people don't, but <laughs> I like them. So I might do it on a slightly lighter brown than this. Um, I wonder if I could get that colour with onion skin. Hmm. Experiment time. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Okay, and this is my sewing project. <laughs> um, you're about to see a weird deflated human torso on your screen. <laughs> yeah, this is me. Um, let me show you that better. <laughs> but this is me. Um, I'm making a bootstrap dress form. So uh, bootstrap fashion is a online um, company where you can, you can send your measurements to them and they'll send you a, a customized pattern to make a dress form or a dressmaker's dummy. So it's a much cheaper way of getting a custom dress form, but you have to do it yourself. <laughs> um, so like, I mean, for me, that was like, okay, I can do that. I've got a sewing machine. I can do the sewing things, but I've certainly learned a lot more about doing the sewing things through this project. It's not totally finished yet. It needs to be, there's an inner support that I need to make that holds the, the stand that it goes on. And then I have to stuff it um, and mount it on the stand, which sounds like some kind of weird human taxidermy nonsense, but <laughs> don't worry, nothing untoward going on here. Um, but yeah, I've, I've learned a lot. Um, had to do some hand basting and things. This circular seam was quite intimidating. Did it? There was, there was a lot of um, sort of hand basting that I had to do to make these cups. They, is YouTube going to censor this? I don't know. Cover your children's eyes. <laughs> um, but yeah, to make to make these um, this chest area look right and not kind of be wonky or bunched up in there. But I think it worked because these cups are quite neat. Um, this top stitching. Um, this is inside out, by the way, because um, that's that's how I'm working on it at the moment. So that's why all the seams are hanging out. But um, yeah. This, this kind of surface top stitching here for the style lines at the bust waist and hips. Um, so yeah, I'm, this is a lot more structural than anything I've done before. So I am very excited about this. Hello. <laughs> and it is almost done. Um, yeah, I just need to make this inner support and attach it, uh, finish off the base and then stuff it and, and get it on a stand. And then I can use it. And um, there's a, a few different things I want to make, um, but this will really help me learn about draping and and fitting properly and helping me to fit on myself because of anyone who's ever tried to do that knows it's very difficult to try and fit something on yourself in the mirror, especially like around the back and stuff. So um, yeah, this, this should be a really useful item. Um, hopefully I might be able to show you some things that I make on it. Uh, yeah, so that's that. That has been taking up a lot of time because it's a bit, I have to concentrate on it a lot. Um, and uh, yeah. I finished the knitted rainbow sparkle jacket thing. And this is it. Okay, so it goes on like this. I'm not going to take off my other jacket, but just to show you. So it goes on like this. So I've just um, sewn the ends together here and then edged the armholes with a row of single crochet. 
and it makes yeah, quite a nice shrug jacket which is what I intended it to, to be so I think it drapes quite well I love this 3d braid effect I think in my last video I did um, put a link to the blog that I got this this idea from um, so yeah this is a success I think it's been hanging around for a couple years so it's nice to get it finished this is going off to a friend but I might um, make one for myself maybe in a plain color Maybe a different stitch pattern for the lace part here. Yeah, we'll see. But I hope my friend likes it. Um, this is so squishy, I love touching it. I think it came out pretty well, um, considering this is the first thing I've ever like designed. I didn't really design it like this. This wasn't my idea. I got the stitch pattern from somewhere. So it's more like I've just slapped together some things that I liked. But <laughs> um, it's, it's, a creation you know for someone who prefers normally to follow patterns um that's why i like cross stitch uh because i can just you know enjoy making the thing um it's it's kind of a branch out for me so it's it's nice to yeah i i feel like a little bit a little bit proud of doing that so i finished the thing And that is going up in the post today, I think. Hopefully. So on my last video, a couple of people commented that they were interested in the natural dyeing clips. And I have been doing some more plant dyeing. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's good because that's what you're about to see. Um, I think I did mention that I was doing some dyeing with apple bark. So we pruned our apple trees um, a few weeks ago and I used the bark, which gives an orange color to dye some cotton, which I'm gonna use to make a skirt, I think. And I don't think the color is gonna come out very well on here. There's a, there's a lot of light, but I don't know. It's always difficult to capture this on camera. I think it's just coming out quite pale but in reality, this is a really lovely um, soft orangey peach colour. Um, it is it is quite a bit stronger than it looks on here. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I love it. Um, I'm going to put the clips of the dyeing process at the end. Um, so I, I stripped the bark off the twigs, the prunings, and then I soaked them for uh, a couple of weeks um, just in some water and then heated those you're not supposed to boil them apparently um, just, just in case anyone is um, planning to give this a go <laughs> at any point it does not smell great um, I don't know what I expected I like essentially heating up slightly fermented tree bark but <laughs> it, it is not a good smell and my family was not pleased with me that day <laughs> And then I did it again, so I actually dyed this twice because I wanted a stronger colour. Um, so yeah, it does help if you keep the lid on the pot. Um, I learned that the hard way. Yeah, <laughs> just just be advised. <laughs> so this needs no mordant apparently because the the amount of tannins in the bark is enough to fix the dye. Um, so this was just dyed with the twigs alone. And yeah, I love it. It came out really well. I'm planning to make a skirt, just a rectangle skirt. Um, so just big rectangle of fabric that's pleated or gathered in, haven't decided which. Slap a waistband on it. I'm, I really want to do some embroidery um, at the waist and hem. Maybe some kind of um, apple black work design. I think that would be really, really cute. Like, if I can find some kind of Elizabethan style black work motif to do with apples. If I'm up to that, <laughs> we'll see. So, yeah, I'm quite, I'm really pleased with this. And I wish I could get the, the colour right on camera. But anyway, next step is to dye some cross stitch fabric, I think. Because I have a few ideas for that. Um, and the other one 
is this yarn, which kind of is coming out. Um, and this was originally an amazing, amazing golden yellow colour, which was achieved with some of the apple bark, uh, the leftover dye bar, some daffodil, and a bit of onion skins, which are supposed to brighten the colour, and they do. And the reason it's green is because I then placed it in uh, an iron water solution. Um, so I made that with just like a jar full of nails. And iron saddens colours, so it makes them darker. And in the case of yellows, it turns them green. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to make a variegated yarn. And I just dipped parts of this in the iron water solution, and that's the darker green parts. What I didn't realise was that because it was so saturated with water, um, the iron sort of crept up the other parts as well and, and turned them green too. So <laughs> I still really like how it came out. Um, you know, I've learned. And this will be really fun to make into something. And it's my hands fun as well, so I can be really smug and be like, oh, well, I made this yarn and I also dyed it myself. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's just about everything I've been up to. Uh, what are we on? 26 minutes, that's, that's pretty good. I am of the rambly persuasion, so we're, we're doing well. Um, oh, and I also have this box which my mum gave me, um, which has been kicking around for years and she gave it to me to store my threads and flosses and everything in. It's a little bit broken on one side, but it does that. Ah. <laughs> so I'm quite excited to get that into use. Um, but because this has been kicking around a few years as well, um, I did find this inside. <laughs> I was like, yes, mum, I might steal this. It's fun when you find um, little little bits of who um, people's previous lives, previous lives, lives before <laughs> you came along. Um, yeah, so uh, that's about that. En enjoy some awkward dying clips. Uh, have fun, make things. I will see you next time.